Hello everyone. In this, we will see some of the important questions related to the subject quantitative techniques meant for fifth semester BCA under this NEP syllabus. The first question, a train travels for six hours at 90 km per hour. Find the distance. So we know speed is distance traveled by time taken. So by cross multiplying, we can write the distance formula as speed multiplied by time. So here speed is given as 90 km per hour and time is given as 6 hours. So the total distance will be 540 km. So that is the solution for this. Let us move on to the next question. From a point P on a level ground, the angle of elevation of a top of the tower is 60 degrees. If the tower is 150 high, meter high, find the distance of the point P from the foot of the tower. So we will consider this as P. Since this is, we will consider this as Q, this is R. So means our RQ is the tower. We are supposed to find and this height of the tower is given as 150 meter. And then they gave us from the point P on a level ground, the angle of elevation to the top of tower is 60 degrees. Means this one is given as 60 degrees. We are supposed to find what is PQ. The distance between this point and the foot of the tower. Foot of the tower is our Q. So now we can consider tan 60, which is opposite divided by adjacent. Here opposite is RQ and then adjacent is PQ. RQ is known to be 150. We are supposed to find PQ. And we know tan 60 is nothing but root 3. Root 3 is equal to 150 by PQ, which means our PQ will be 150 divided by root 3. Generally, we don't keep uh, square roots in the denominator, so we will rationalize it by multiplying numerator and denominator by root 3. So this becomes 150 root 3 by 3. Root 3 into root 3 is 3. So that will give us PQ equal to, uh, this goes 50 times. So 50 root 3 meter. So that will be the solution for this. Next is, Define qualitative and quantitative data. From the name itself, we can consider that quantitative is numerical and qualitative is non-numerical. So that is what is addressed here. Qualitative data is a non-numerical data. It can be a descriptive or textual or visual information. Generally, in qualitative data, we collect opinions, attitudes and experiences. Some of the examples for qualitative data collection are open-ended survey responses, interview transcripts, observational notes, images, or videos. Quantitative data is a non-numerical data, which is measurable, countable, and comparable information are collected. And quantitative data, you collect generally facts, statistics, and metrics. Some of the examples for them are survey ratings, for example, for a scale of one to five, or it can be test scores, or it can be sales figures, or anything related to demographic data like age, income, etc. So the key difference you may notice that qualitative data explores why and how, while quantitative data answers what and how many. That is what it is. Now we'll move on to the next. Next question is, name the basic 
four basic requirements of teaching. So the first one, subject matter, means knowledge of the content or material to be taught, learning objectives, clear goals and outcomes for student learning, and then what are the teaching methods, means the effective strategies and techniques for instruction, and uh, assessment and evaluations about measures to gauge student understanding and progress. These are the four basic requirements. So, recalling it, subject matter, learning objectives, teaching methods and assessment or evaluation. Next is, what is research ethics? Uh, here, research ethics refers to the principles and guidelines that ensure the conduct of research is morally sound, respectful and responsible. So the key principles for research ethics are respect for persons. Means if at all, if you are taking certain information from people during your research, you, you should have an informed consent and if there is any privacy issues that should be maintained. Beneficence, which is maximize benefits and minimize harm. Non Maleficence, non maleficence that is do not do no harm autonomy participant freedom justice that is fairness and equity then research ethics ensure protection of human and animal subjects integrity of data and findings transparency and accountability avoidance of plagiarism and bias so these are about research ethics let us move on to the next question. We start with the five mark question. First one, find the cube root of 571, 787. First, what we will do, we will triplet, I mean, we'll remove, we'll collect the triplet. The first triplet is 571 and the second triplet is 787. Now consider the second triplet. So that means we are considered 787. Before we further proceed, we need to know about the cube roots from 1 to up to 9. So 1 cube is 1, 2 cube is 8, 3 cube is 27, 4 cube is 64, 5 cube is 125, 6 cube is 216, 7 cube is 343, 8 cube is 512, 9 cube is 729. We will have to have this. Now, if we consider 787, the unit the digit is 7. We may notice 7 comes only when it is 3. Means, I can say cube root of 571787. Since it is a cube root, we put a 3 here. Will be a two digit number. In that, the unit, the digit will be 3. Because of this reason, 3 cube is 27. So this will be 3. Now consider uh, this first triplet, which is 571. That lies between which cubes? You may notice it lies between 8 cube and 9 cube. Because 8 cube is 512, 9 cube is 729. It lies between them. So we will be considering the first number, which is 8. So 83, the cube will be your 571787. So that way we can find out cube roots. This is applicable if the number given is a perfect cube. Since they are asking us to find the cube root, we are assuming here that this number is a perfect cube. Next question. The banker's gain on a bill due in four months discounted to 15% is rupees 720. Find the true discount, banker's discount and face value of the bill. First, we will write down banker's gain formula. Banker's gain is A into Ni, the whole square, divided by 1 plus Ni. So, where... The A is amount of the bill. We can also call that as a face value of the bill. Mm -hmm. 
then n is number of years i is rate of interest per annum so here n is given as you may notice 4 months which is 4 by 12 year i is given as 15% so 0 0.15 so we can have our n into i as 4 by 12 is nothing but 1 by 3. 1 by 3 times 0 0.15, which will give us 0 0.05. Which means our Ni, the whole square is 0 0.05, the whole square, which will give us 0 0.0025. Now we will substitute the relevant values. Banker's gain is given in the question as 720. So I will say... 720 is equal to A times Ni the whole square is 0 0.0025 divided by 1 plus 0 0.05. We will now cross multiply this. So we will have A will be 720 times 1.05 divided by 0 0.0025. If we calculate this, we will get the amount or the face value of the bill as rupees 3024.00. Now let us find out what is banker's discount. That formula is A into N into I. We just now got A as 3024.00 times N into I. We know it is 0 0.05. So if we multiply these two, we get rupees 15. 120. Now we have banker's gain is banker's discount minus true discount, which means our true discount is banker's discount minus banker's gain. So now banker's gain just now we calculated. It is 15,120 minus banker's gain is given in the question as 720, which means true discount will be 14,000. 400. So we got true discount as 14,400. This is our banker's discount. This is the face value of the bill. 3 lakh 2,400. So that will be the solution for this question.